This is a specific but oddly common type of part that we have to make inside of our print farms. So today we're gonna to talk about how to optimize a ring with some clamps on top of it. So this design comes up a lot. There's a lot of these types of pipe fittings out there that are meant to connect two things together, or catch stuff or whatever it happens to be. And it comes up in a lot of different formats too. So like lids of enclosures and that kind of thing where you have these clamps on top of something else. Now, whenever somebody tries to print this, they put it down on the bed just like that, but now the layer lines are in the plane of the clips. So as soon as you start reefing on it, those snap right off. You can use different materials in order to optimize this, but really it's about the design. So we're gonna show you some really nifty designs to get around this. However, if you're stuck with this, if it has to be printed like this, there's a few things that you can do. First of all, like I say, you can change the material. You don't print it in PLA, you print it in something like PETG or nylon or something else, so you get a little bit better layer adhesion. On our side, we're able to experiment more and make those stick a whole lot better if we're allowed to kind of over extrude and if tolerances are really low. So there's a way to get it printed like that to where there's really good layer adhesion, but then the surface finish might get messed up. The other thing you can do is make just minor modifications to the design. If you, again, if you wanna print it like this, that's fine, but then the point of failure again is those clips. If you wanna reinforce those, you can just add some chamfers to the outer edges of them so that now they are actually reinforced and able to stay there. And that way you're losing some flexibility and you have to rely on the flexibility of the ring rather than flexibility of the clips, so it's not always a good option. With the design of this though too, just in general, make sure that you're filleting the lower edge that's in contact with the bed, that way we don't have to worry about elephant footing or other sort of first layer artifacts. It just preps it for the piece if you're stuck with this. But let's go ahead and move on to something a little bit better. The very first and easiest solution is to just print it at an angle like this, not on its side, at an angle. What this does is it now puts the layer lines partially in plane with the clips without requiring support on the clips so that you can actually grow this part up and easily. All of the clips get way stronger because again, the layer lines are almost in plane with them and it becomes much easier to mass produce. However, sometimes you do require a brim down on the bottom to adhere it to the bed and potentially even some support underneath here. The other issue that can come up is a lot of roughness and nastiness on these back edges that are an overhang because it's a fairly steep overhang and a fairly thin, fragile part. So in order to reduce this, again, fill it in, round out the edges. Sharp edges that are overhangs always warp and deform. So avoid them as much as possible. But that also requires a small cut on the bottom so that you actually have a flat surface to put against the bed. If you don't have a flat surface, then the part is going to fail all the time and you're gonna radically increase your cost. Now, of course, you can also extend this out to the traditional piece itself. Taking the same chamfered piece makes it even better because now you don't have to worry about the overhangs of the clips themselves. And you're again able to balance it up right here on its edge just as it's sitting there. Now, going a little bit further than that, with those fillets and those chamfers when you're printing on its edge like this, you have effectively eliminated the overhangs. And you can take this a little bit further by adding an octagonal outer pattern. This is only necessary if the strength of the clips are absolutely critical and you need to maximize that. In this situation, you want to print it on its side. Printing it on its side allows all of the layer lines to be in plane with the clips. In this case, you also want to make sure that the clips themselves are at a 45 degree angle to horizontal, because if you have one on top and one on the bottom, now they're again in a plane where they can break off because the layers can delaminate. Putting them on the diagonal side makes sure that they're not able to do that. So you're printing it on its side like this. Now you're running into a different issue that you have to be aware of and that there's this effectively overhang inside of here. The best way to deal with that is with designed interior support rather than auto-generated support that we might provide if we were prepping the parts for you. If that's done incorrectly, you can end up with a lot of this kind of nastiness on the top where you have this sagging and weird sort of delamination of the layers and it just doesn't look very good. You also have to be aware of the tongues that if they overhang in any way in one direction, which these do because they have kind of an L shape where they go up and then out. So in order to achieve that, you're gonna have an overhang that's just unsupported and you have support underneath there. You can tweak this a little bit by taking these tongues and moving them closer together so that these two bottom ones interface with the bed and they lay straight against the bed. That way you don't have to deal with supporting underneath them. And then these upper ones also grow into themselves from this chamfer down here. So hopefully that shows you how to make a very simple ring with some clips on it or how to make any sort of shape that needs these clips. Being able to print on its side reinforces these a great deal so that you don't have to worry about them breaking off. And there's a lot of other geometrical changes that you can make in order to make sure that this part is as reliable as if it was made with injection molding. But now you don't have the cost of tooling, you have the scale and flexibility of 3D printing farms, and you're able to change the design anytime you need it. Have a great day, everybody.